Hey guys, so this is the start of my Boston vlog. I am so excited about it. Today is Monday the 24th and tomorrow the 25th, very early in the morning, I'm going to be setting off to the airport. I am going on this trip by myself, which is the first time I've ever gone on a vacation by myself. So definitely a little bit nervous, but mostly excited. Because I am getting up so early for this, I wanted to do my little introduction now. I may end up splitting this vlog into two parts depending on how much footage I get because I'll be alone I'll have a lot more time to get talking clips in things like that so it's very possible it will be a lot so we'll see how it goes some things I'm planning to do I am planning of course to go to a lot of bookstores I have already looked up a bunch of potential options for me to walk to for my hotel I am also going to a few other towns just outside of Boston so I'm going to Concord to visit primarily to visit Louisa May Alcott's house but I will be doing hopefully a few other things while I'm there I will be going to Salem as well, of course, for Salem Witch Trials, and then I will also, while I'm there, visit Nathaniel Hawthorne's house, so that will be really great. And then I'm going to Quincy to hopefully see stuff to do with John and Abigail Adams. When I was looking on their site, it said that the visitor center is open, but the houses are not open, and some of the parts said it was open May 1st, so that's the day I was going to go, that Monday. But some of the parts of the site said they weren't open till May 3rd, so it would be after I left. So anyway, I'll definitely try to go to the visitor center that Monday and then we'll see if the houses are open or not. If not, I'll just walk around. I know there's a church where they are buried and there's a Abigail Adams house, which I tried to reach out to the people running it because I couldn't see anywhere to get tickets. So I was like, okay, is this one closed too? I'm not sure. And so yeah, I emailed them and they never got back to me. So we'll just see what happens in Quincy, really. If all I can do is the visitor center and maybe walk around the the grounds that will be okay and then of course I'll be around Boston for a few days I also am planning to go to Harvard I have been to Boston before and we took a bus tour where we saw Louisa May Alcott's house and we also stopped briefly at Harvard but we didn't weren't able to get out so this will be my chance to see those pl two places a little more in depth so I'm planning to do that and yeah I really want it to primarily be a pretty chill trip though so I have plans I have like a couple places in Salem I have scheduled a tour with and then I have a couple places in Concord I've scheduled a tour with. Like I said, Quincy is kind of up in the air, but I do intend to hopefully do a tour or two there. All my days in Boston, I have three of them that I have planned. One will be Harvard focused, and then I have my first day there will just be wandering around mostly doing bookstores, maybe just seeing the sights. And then the third day I'm spending in Boston, I'm planning to go on a harbor tour and just kind of wander around that day as well. So it's going to be a pretty chill trip, which I'm really excited about. Usually, when I go places, I my family really likes to do a lot of stuff, which is fun and I love it. But it's nice to go back to somewhere that I've been before where I don't feel as much push to make sure I get in as much as possible because I know that I've been there before. There's a lot I've already seen and likely I'll go back again because I, as long as this trip goes as well as last one, because I really loved my trip to Boston when I was 16. So that's where we're at. As far as books go, I do have a couple of books I'll probably show you once I get there. As far as on the plane what I might end up reading slash listening listening to on audiobook. I do have the audiobook for The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne for obvious reasons so I'll be listening to that. If I do physically read anything I have The Inheritance by Louisa May Alcott and then I also have Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield which I chose in my last vlog if you saw that and I haven't finished it because I've just been all over the place this past week so I didn't get much time to read so hopefully I'll be able to my goal is to finish all three of those on this trip. If I don't it's okay but I like I said I intend for it to be pretty chill so I'm going to have a lot of time to just sit in parks near historical sites and just read and I think it will just be incredible so anyway those are my plans and I will next update you probably Wednesday morning most likely potentially tomorrow evening after I've landed and get into my hotel if I have the energy for it but like I said I'm getting up really early I'm going to be traveling all day it's gonna be kind of a stressful and long day so I feel like I might be too tired <laughs> to do a clip then but for sure Wednesday morning I will. Hey guys so I have made it to Boston it was quite an event both of my flights got delayed which the first one was really stressful because obviously I was going to meet, miss my second flight but then because the second flight got delayed I was able to get in. They actually had shut the doors already but I was like oh I missed a flight because of my delayed flight um, to try to get something figured out I was letting the people at the desk know and they were like oh you can just get on it's still here so I was like okay 
you <laughs> made it on time. Everything's good. So I thought I'd give you a little room tour. It's not that exciting. There's not even like art on the walls really or anything. So it's a little bit strange, but let me just show you around. So this is your view when you walk in. And it's, I think this is my favorite part. There's this cute little vanity right there where I can do makeup and stuff. It will be really, really nice. And then we have this awkwardly big bathroom that has much more floor space than I necessarily need in this bathtub. It's kind of giant. It's got a seat. The bathtub itself, I guess, isn't giant, but with this, it makes it look really big. <laughs> anyway, and then out here we have a little closet, of course. The desk here, TV. And then you come around here and there's the bed. Like I said, there's no like art on the wall. So it feels a little like bland and dead, but hey, it will work for my purposes, so. And then my view is not the best, but it works and I can at least see the skyline. And then I don't know if I can get it. Oh yeah, right there on the very edge, you can see Fanwell Hall. But yes, it's really, exciting i'm excited so anyway i also forgot my tripod so it's gonna be interesting to see how i end up filming clips on here but for tonight it's almost eight o'clock and i am tired already so i think i'm just gonna turn in i might read or watch something i did start the inheritance by louisa may alcott in fact i got over halfway through so that's going pretty well it's not my favorite i think at this point i would probably give it like two stars on Goodreads. So I'm not loving it, but like, it's one of those stories where there's just nothing really to it and it's not really drawing me in, but it's cute. It's not like difficult to read. It's just very bland so far. The characters are very bland. The plot is pretty bland. Although there is something that just happened that may spark some interesting things. It's only like 188 pages. Well, not including like the stuff at the end, it's 177 pages. So not very long at all. And the pages are really small and the font's pretty big. So I really wasn't reading for that long on my trip, but I ended up reading like a hundred pages So anyway, I might read that and or I might like I said watch something We'll see what I feel like I'm probably gonna turn in at a decent time tonight Probably like 10 ish if not earlier I just want to make sure I'm getting in into a good sleeping schedule as soon as possible because I already know I'm not going to be out on the town at this time of night any other nights if I can help it because I'm a lonely girl in a big city and I am not putting myself in that position. So that is it for now and I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay, so the angle on this is not the best. Like I said, I forgot my tripod. So we're just making do with what I've got. But I was going to come on here and tell you what I'm planning to do today. It is Wednesday. I ended up getting a great night's sleep. It's almost 10 in the morning. So I did sleep in a bit because I was just dead tired. But now I'm about to head out. I'm planning to start at Fanwell Hall because that's where they'll have a lot of information about the Freedom Trail and other things around town and even though last time I was here I did most of the Freedom Trail so I don't really want to just follow it again. I do want to kind of know when I'm close to things and if there's anything in particular I'd like to see now that I'm older and maybe know a bit more about things. So that's what I'm gonna do and then I have a list of like five bookstores in Boston that I would love to go to while I'm here so I'm hoping to get to at least three of them today. I may get to more and that's great but I do have another day in Boston where where I am planning to just kind of wander around. So I'd like to have at least one or two on that day that I can visit. And maybe that day I'll spend a little more time focused on the history. But anyway, either way, I'm going to have plenty of time to do a lot of stuff today because I'm literally, I don't have anything scheduled today. I'm just going to be wandering around Boston. So I will take you along with me, hopefully get some good B-roll footage. I also need to make sure I get pictures for Instagram. I'm so bad. When I am filming a vlog, I tend to get a lot of video footage obviously but then I always forget pictures and so Instagram ends up being kind of sad and I also just miss out on having pictures from my travels because I just have video clips which is fine but you know there's just something different about pictures so hopefully I'll get both in and yeah like I said I'll take you along if I end up getting kind of sad I'll take a little video and chat with you a bit at some point maybe. I do also intend to do some reading today so I you're actually sitting on my books so I can't show you them but I am bringing both The Inheritance by Louis
Teresa May Alcott and Once Upon a River. I'd like to read at least like 20 or so more pages in The Inheritance because I kind of want to finish it at In Concord tomorrow. I just think it would be really cool to finish a Louisa May Alcott book near her home. I just think that would be really nice. So I'd like to read about 20 more pages of that so I have a better chance of being able to finish it in Concord tomorrow. And then I'd love to read more of Once Upon a River. I just had a comment on my last vlog where I chose to read Once Upon a River where someone said they actually preferred it to The 13th Tale, which I have never heard anyone say. I always hear everybody say that The 13th Tale is their favorite by Diane Satterfield. So I'm very curious to see where I fall now because so far I'm really, really loving it. Like there's nothing about it that I'm disliking. It's one of those books where I've just been kind of struggling to find the motivation to read in general. But when I have started reading it, I get pulled right in and just don't want to stop. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to finish both of those on this trip. I was also going to mention with these bookstores that I'm visiting here, I also have a couple in Salem and a couple in Concord that I want to visit. Unfortunately, Quincy didn't have any, which shocked me, but I'm sure in the visitor center in the gift shop, they'll have some books. So I'll be able to do that. But I wanted to do some local bookstore support. So I'm planning to buy something at every bookstore I go to, even if it's just something little. I have several people I need to buy souvenirs for, so it's possible I'll be able to find something in one of the bookstores that will work for that. While I do have a couple of bookstores near me in my hometown, there's not a lot. And so when I go traveling, I really want to find those local bookstores and support them when I can. I mean, I do just in general, but especially because I don't have as much at home, I like to take advantage while I'm out. Although I do need to work on going to some of my more local ones a little bit more in my life. It's just hard because I've mentioned before, I'm trying not to increase the amount of books on my TBR too much. This trip might just completely shoot that to hell, but we'll see how it goes. Also just money in general. I mean, the bookstores near me are used bookstores mostly, so they're not that expensive. But anyway, now I'm rambling. I'm going to get going. I am a little bit hungry. I know there's a bagel place not terribly far from here, so I may just stop there potentially. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for food today. I'm just going to kind of wander and see what sounds good in the moment. I also have just like when I travel, I tend to not be as hungry. I don't know if it's like an anxiety thing or what, or just my body, like my mind is confused being in a different place. And so I just don't get as hungry as fast and when I do eat I don't eat very much so we'll yeah it will be a journey because usually I'm with family or friends even and we go together to these big restaurants and they tend to eat a lot more than I do so it's just like I go and I eat what I can and I try to get smaller things and it's fine but now like being by myself I don't really know how it's gonna work I've never been to a restaurant by myself <laughs> like I mean fast food obviously like places like that but an actual restaurant and while I'm here I'll want to do that so anyway again I'm rambling let's get out into the road
forgive my very disheveled appearance. It was very windy today, but I am back. It's about six o'clock, which may be kind of early for some people. For me, especially after today where I've been walking all day, I am exhausted. So I am planning to just stay in. For the rest of the night, I have had dinner. I had a little bit of an earlier dinner. But before I get into my lazy evening, I am going to show you what I ended up picking up from the couple of bookstores I went to today. The first one I went to was Commonwealth Books, which was really nice. It was a little used bookstore. It was very, you would have seen some footage, but it was kind of on the messy side for sure. But there was a charm to it and it was still organized enough that I could find things. So that was helpful. And they had some really great things. I would have gotten actually more than this. Really all of the stores that I went to, I would have gotten more than what I ended up getting, but I'm trying to control myself because like I said, I will be going to bookstores in Salem and Concord. I will possibly get a book at the John Adams Historic Park and potentially, I don't think this is going to happen actually. Well, when I wander around Harvard, I guess on Sunday, there's another bookstore that I hope to be able to go to. So I still have like four at least bookstores that I would like to go to. I may not get a book at every single one, but if I do, I need to make sure it's only one at each one. This first one, I wasn't sure how the other ones would go, so I did end up getting three things, but thankfully a couple of them are really small, so they're not gonna cause too much drama, hopefully, on my carry-on bag. But first of all, I got Pirate Latitudes by Michael Creighton. Creighton. I had never heard of this before and I saw it and I was like, you know, all I've wanted for such a long time is a pirate book. That sounded good and this one sounds really good. I know nothing about it, but like I said, it sounded, the blurb kind of tells a little bit about it. I'm still not completely sure what it's about, but I have enough of a sense that it's going to be a really solid pirate book. So hopefully that is true and I end up really liking this because it was very much an impulse buy because like I said, I had never heard of it. Then I got a couple of classics. First of all, I have The Lifted Veil and Brother Jacob by George Eliot. These are two of her short story novella type things. I'm not sure what you would classify each of them as, but I've never seen a copy of just these two. It was really, it's really thin. It's only $6. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it while I'm here in this nice Oxford World's Classics edition. I'm just, yeah, very pleased with that. And then I got the Comedy of Errors in the Folgers Shakespeare Library edition that I'm collecting. This was the only one they had in this edition that I did not own yet. So there is that. The second bookstore I went to was the Brattle Bookshop, which is a pretty well-known rare books bookstore, but they also have a lot of other used books at various price points. And I did hear, I, like I said, I was starting to try to realize that I need to keep it to one book at each book store if I'm going to get a book there. So I had to narrow down between a couple of options and I ended up going for Romola by George Eliot. So another George Eliot that I picked up. They had a lot of actually Wilkie Collins books that sounded really good that I wanted to pick up. And those were the ones I was debating between, but I'm like, you know what? Ultimately, I like George Eliot as an author better than I like Wilkie Collins. So I may as well go for this. I also really have wanted to read this and watch the group discussion from, I believe it was on Kate Howe's channel. She and a group of other booktubers hosted a read-along of this book a couple of months ago now, and I did actually save on my Watch Later playlist their discussion because I wanted to read it and then watch that because I just love watching people discuss books on YouTube. Well, obviously I love booktube, but I just mean specifically when they're talking to each other and recording their conversation between multiple people. I really like doing that. So yes, I ended up getting this old Penguin English Library edition of Romla and I'm very excited about it. Then I went to a bookstore that I'm not 100% sure what you would call it. It's the Boston edition of Porter Square Books, but the sign that's on it is Grub Street Center for Creative Writing. So it was kind of confusing trying to find it, but I saw a bookstore and I was like, that must be it. And it was, but I think its main name is Porter Square Books because there's Porter Square Shopping Center. There's one in Porter Square Shopping Center in Cambridge. And then there's the 
Boston edition, but they're both the same company. Like I said, kind of confusing, but I did find my way there and they had new books. So they were not a used bookstore. And I already knew as soon as I found a new books bookstore and I knew the first new books bookstore that I found, I was going to go straight to trying to find Babel or Babel by RF Kwong. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but this is a book that so many people have talked about. It's a standalone fantasy. I believe it follows a man during the Victorian era. He is, I believe he's Chinese. I'm not 100% sure or if there's another character that's Chinese. He is attending school at this very prestigious institute and I believe they study different kinds of magic maybe? Not 100% sure, but it is like fantastical dark academia and that just sounded amazing. I just desperately, desperately wanted this when I heard about it. And now I finally have it, got it here in Boston, and I'm very pleased with it. As you can see, I've kind of got a lot of books going already and I'm planning to get more. So I've already told myself that if Sunday night, if I try to pack everything and it doesn't work, I am going to have to possibly check my suitcase and then get a new bag that I can put all my books in. But we'll see, we'll wait till I get to that point before I make any decisions like that. So yes, that's what I got today. I am going to possibly take a bath or shower or both because my muscles are aching. My back is killing me. I am just so tired. I think tonight I am going to try, I didn't read at all today, but I do think before I watch anything, I'm going to try to get some reading in. And then I think I'm going to watch Little Women. I'm not sure which adaptation of Little Women I'm going to watch, 98 or 2019, but I think I'm going to watch one of those in preparation for Conquered tomorrow. And then, yeah, that's pretty much my plans for tonight. So I will chat with you tomorrow morning. so I realized I didn't actually tell you what I was doing today. So you would have seen some footage. I went to a couple of bookstores in Concord. That's where I'm at today. And I did get a couple of books I wanted to show you really quick before I head over to the Old Manse where I'm doing a tour, which is like a place where a lot of historical literary and just historical stuff has happened. And then later today, I'll be going to Orchard House for Louisa May Alcott. But anyway, the two books I got was, first of all, there was a new bookstore that a new books bookstore that I went to and there I ended up getting The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel which I'm really excited about. I read Station Eleven last year and really loved it so I've wanted to get more into her work and this one sounds really interesting. I think this one has mixed reviews a little bit more. I don't think I've heard anybody say they dislike it just more like they didn't love it as much as Station Eleven but I'm still excited about it and then at the used bookstore the second bookstore I went to I ended up getting And the Mountains Echoed by Khalid Hosseini which I'm really really excited about as well. I haven't read a Khalid Hosseini in years. The only one I've ever read was a Thousand Splendid Sons and I read that in high school so it's been a hot minute so I'm excited to have that as well but anyway yes I'm off to the old manse and I will obviously take you along with me get some footage and we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the day
I am back at the hotel, as you can see. Today was a lot of fun. You would have seen some footage. I wasn't able to get a lot because both of the houses that I toured, the old manse and orchard house, did not allow video to be taken inside. Mostly, at least for the old manse, because they didn't want the tour guides being recorded. But yeah, in general, I just wasn't able to get very much footage. So apologies for that, but it was still a really great time. And you would have seen some footage from Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. I was only able to find Ralph Waldo Emerson's grave. I didn't really stay very long or make a huge effort to try to find things because I was getting pretty tired at that point, but I'm glad I at least ended up running into his so I was able to see someone's grave from that area that I knew about. It is now six o'clock and like I said, I'm pretty tired. I had a really late lunch. I didn't get to eat till like two. And so by the time I was done eating, it was like 2.33ish. All right, sorry if you still hear the sirens. I was pausing for a minute because there's sirens going on outside of my window. But anyway, what was I even saying? Oh, I was talking about lunch. Yes, I had a late lunch, so I'm not hungry. I'm a little worried that I'm going to get hungry at like an awkward time. So I don't really know what to do about that. I may end up stepping out once more today before the end of the day to go get some sort of dinner. It will probably be something I can just take back here. Or maybe I'll just snack on. I have a few snacking items that I can snack on instead, maybe if I really don't want to leave, which is possible because like I said, I'm just exhausted. So anyway, I did get a couple of books from the gift shops at both of the locations I went to. I guess I should explain what the old manse is because I don't think I've really done that, partially because I didn't fully know myself. I knew vaguely that it had to do with what like Ralph Waldo Emerson and Nathaniel Hawthorne, but I wasn't really sure beyond that. But it actually was the home of Ralph Waldo Emerson's grandfather. He's the one who built it. And then it kind of got passed down through the family line, specifically Ralph Waldo Emerson's grandfather, his wife, after he died, got remarried. And the man she got married to ended up also buying out the house from the son with no bad feelings, but he did buy it out from the son. And then it was went down that family line, so the Ripley family line. And for a while, they actually rented it to Nathaniel Hawthorne. So he lived there for about three years with his wife when they were early on in their marriage. And they actually sounded so sweet. Um, his wife was actually an artist. And so the two of them would just be creative together. He would write upstairs, she would do art downstairs, and it just sounded incredible. It's also at a point right where the British and the American colonists started fighting in Concord, the of Concord after the Battle of Lexington. So basically that more solid beginning point of the war was fought very near that home. And so we were actually able to see the bridge where the first shots were fired. Between the two sides, it was just like, just across the field a little bit and you could see it right there. It was pretty insane. They actually had this old clock that was from the time that this house was built and they actually have kept it working all of these years later. So it still ticks, it still chimes on the hour and it's the same ticking and chimes that they would have heard during that battle and during the hours leading up after Paul Revere warned them that the Redcoats were coming. So anyway, yes, really cool place and they actually have a lot of the original furniture and stuff because when they bought, when the trustees of this board bought the building itself, they also were able to buy everything that was inside of it. And so all of the furniture, everything is the same. And that occurred in 1939. So super, super cool experience. But anyway, I ended up picking up Selections from Mosses from an Old Manse by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which was actually written in the Old Manse. And obviously it was inspired by it. It's a collection of short stories and I believe the first story is yeah is about the old manse and it actually focuses on this house so I thought it would be really cool to buy this at the place where it was written and so you can see on the cover there's a sketch of the house itself and yeah super super cool the tour guide really highly suggested this selection of short stories as well by Nathaniel Hawthorne my feelings about Nathaniel Hawthorne are a little bit uncertain at the moment so in high school I obviously read the Scarlet Red 
letter and I remember liking it. I don't remember disliking it at all, but I don't remember it well enough to feel confident to say I did really like it or that I would now, which is why I need to listen to the audiobook of it while I'm here. I keep forgetting to actually do that. Then a few years ago, I read The House of the Seven Gables and I didn't love it. But the thing is, I think Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing is beautiful. Like I loved re the experience of reading the words of The House of the Seven Gables, but the plot just held nothing for me. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing. So I'm wondering if short stories with him will work better for me than full on novels because I'm getting his writing, but we're able to keep the plot a little tighter. And so hopefully that will be the case. I also just was flicking through this and one of them mentioned Vanity Fair, like Vanity Fair from, actually it could have been referencing Pilgrim's Progress, not, oh my gosh, I can't remember the author's name. William Thackeray, William Thackeray. It may not be referring to Vanity Fair by William Thackeray, it could be just discussing Vanity Fair within Pilgrim's Progress, but I guess I'll find out when I get to that. Anyway, there is that. And then of course at Ordered the House, I had to get something. It was really hard actually to choose what I wanted to get because I honestly wanted to get several things, but I know I already have purchased other books and I'm going to need to try to fit all of these into my luggage if possible. Like I've said before, I think in this video, I'm willing to purchase another bag and check one of my bags, but I I'd rather not have to worry about it. So I'm trying to gain a little bit more control over myself. Thankfully, I don't think I'm going to be getting very many more books, maybe one or two for the rest of my trip because I've been to, I guess there's one other bookstore I'm going to in Harvard. There is one in Salem as well. So really those two are the only plans I have and I might not even get books at both of those. I may get something else. We'll just have to see. But anyway, I did have to limit myself at Orchard House. So I ended up going with Louisa May Alcott, Her Life, Letters, and Journals, edited by Edna Dow Cheney. This was actually published in 1889 by Edna Cheney and it's just what it sounds like. It is a collection of her letters and journals and a few other works it looks like. There's hospital sketches in here with which is I believe one of her first, if not her first work that she published. So anyway, yes, I got this. Like I said, it was hard to choose. There were a couple of other nonfiction books about her that I was interested in, a few books by her that I was interested in, but I felt like this was the best of both worlds. Getting a little bit of nonfiction in there, but it's still written by her. So I felt like, yeah, this was going to be the best thing to get there. So that's what I did. And I'm very pleased with my finds. I already showed you my little haul from the book stores that I went to while I was there so that's good. I did get a couple of little keychains for myself and my mom and sister for little souvenirs so I just have a few more souvenirs for other people that I need to get. I think I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing tomorrow now because I don't want to forget again. Tomorrow is probably going to be a more chill day. Honestly I think that I need that to rejuvenate and get re-excited for everything. I just feel like I've been very over overwhelmed by my travel here. And then I've pretty much been go, go, going. I mean, today was definitely a little less go, go, go than yesterday because I was driving a lot and able to just kind of do that. But I am pretty exhausted. So I think tomorrow I have one thing scheduled and that is a harbor tour, which will be at one. So I have the whole morning to kind of just do whatever. And I think unless I end up feeling really motivated, I might just bum around here and watch things, read things, whatever, go do the harbor tour. And then maybe afterwards, I think the only other thing I might like to do tomorrow, there's two things actually. One, I wouldn't mind going to Paul Revere's house and two, Two, I wouldn't mind going to the aquarium if it's open, which when I was looking up things before coming here, I'm pretty sure it said the aquarium was closed for some reason. So I may not even be able to go there, in which case I'll go to Paul Revere's house. But I feel like the aquarium would just be nice as something a little bit different from what I've been doing, all the history, which don't get me wrong, love the history, but I do feel like I just need to mix it up a little bit, give, give a refresh to myself, particularly because Saturday I will be back into the history 
Brewery with Salem. So yes, that's where I'm at right now. I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Like I said tonight, I don't know when I'm having dinner, if I'm really going to have a solid dinner or if I'm just gonna snack. And then I'll probably, I need to finish, oh yeah, I need to finish The Inheritance. I did not finish it in Concord because it was raining. So I just didn't really have a place to sit outside and read it, which was kind of unfortunate. I also have realized on this trip because I've been talking about I want to just sit in a park and read. I think I just need to embrace that I don't really like reading outside. Like it's just too loud. There's too much going on. So I'm not able to focus very well. It's hard to get a really comfortable seat. Like I just, I, what I like to do is to read by a window. Then I can see out and I can see things, but I'm in a much more comfortable chair. I don't have bugs crawling over, all over me. I don't have quite as much to distract me. So that's what I'm going to do tonight is finish this for sure. I also might watch the first episode of John Adams, the miniseries, because that talks directly about the Boston Massacre, which I did do some exploring of yesterday. I also do intend to go to Quincy where John Adams houses are, even though they're not open for tours, but like the visitor center is open and then there's a few other things. So anyway, I'll be there. So I figure may as well invite a little bit of that in. I do love John Adams. Adams. Wow. John and Abigail. Amazing. Love them. Anyway, I think I'm going to close out this clip. I am struggling to even talk right now. I've just been so quiet for hours and hours that talking is just really, my tongue cannot handle it right now. So that's it for now. And you'll probably see a little montage after this of whatever I do tomorrow with the Harbor Tour. And then I'll update you probably tomorrow evening, unless I find a chance and desire earlier on.